Hi, the purpose of this video is to talk about defeating diabetes with prayer and lifestyle choices. You know, the Bible talks an awful lot about gluttony and self-control. And for most Americans, type 2 diabetes uh, results from lifestyle choices. The incidence of diabetes is uh, highly correlated with one's body mass index and has increased greatly in the last 20 years as Americans have been eating uh, more and especially more uh, sugars and sweets and simple starches, white bread uh, kind of stuff. So defeating diabetes is not uh, rocket science. Uh, certainly uh, self-control is very important and also depending on uh, if one already has the disease and if one has uh, gotten complications of the disease like kidney failure or neuropathies or restricted blood flow uh, to the extremities, uh, then certainly there can be room for miraculous prayer uh, for healing for those maladies. And as scripture says, uh, you can uh, go to the elders and ask the elders of the church to anoint you with oil and pray for your healing. Uh, but for the most part, for most Americans, type 2 diabetes is mostly a matter of self-control uh, to uh, control what one is eating, the portions, especially the portions of uh, sugary and simple starches with the high glycemic index and also the self-control to be active and to exercise. Scripture also says in that passage in James where it talks about going to the elders and having them pray, I'll anoint you with oil and pray, it says to confess your sins to one another and if you've sinned to be forgiven. And uh, we do want to be honest about gluttony and overeating and inactivity uh, being sinful behaviors. You know, gluttony uh, and the lack of self-control with regard to food isn't talked about too much in the 21st century American church, but uh, the Bible still speaks to it. In fact, let me emphasize that uh, in Timothy, when Paul talks about the grace of God, it says God's grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and holy lives in the present age. We also know uh, from Galatians chapter 5 that gluttony uh, is a sin. But it, Galatians 5, 22 talks about self-control as one of the fruits of the Spirit, or one of the fruit of the Spirit, where it says the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law. So I have a twin brother and my twin brother was uh, diagnosed with diabetes over a decade ago and he had it for a long time before uh, he got a proper diagnosis because his first uh, symptom was a neuropathy in his leg. When he was finally diagnosed with it, he took the normal course of action starting the medications, the uh, metformin, the insulin, you know, Genuvia and so on, and was on a heavy course of medications to control the diabetes for about a decade. At the same time, when I realized uh, that I was high risk for diabetes because my twin brother and a number of other family members have been diagnosed with it, I didn't want any part of that because I've seen a number of, and known a number of older people who over the years of managing and having diabetes, it ends up, their neuropathies, there are lots of things that you can't do, uh, the medication's expensive. Uh, people with diabetes often end up becoming a burden on the health care system, on their family finances, and then finally on their families as their health declines, uh, needing other people to take care of them rather than to be able to uh, be more self-reliant and take care of their own needs. So on the whole, I didn't want any part to do with uh, getting diabetes. So. Um, I had my doctor start monitoring it and I was riding my bike about a thousand miles a year at that point, mountain biking, and I was trying to uh, reduce my intake of sugary foods, you know, no uh, sweetened sodas, no sweetened tea, cut way back on the desserts and so on. But then about five years ago, I was finally di diagnosed as pre-diabetic, so I needed to make some additional changes. So when I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic, in about five years ago, I increased my bike riding from about a thousand miles a year to about two thousand miles a year. And I also got more careful, uh, reduced my bacon cheeseburgers to about once a month, 
And uh, other than my family's birthdays, you know, me, my wife, and my three children, cutting out the desserts, no ice cream and cake, you know, maybe one or two, literally maybe one or two other special occasions a year where I, well, where I would eat uh, desserts. And, you know, and shifting the snacks. I no longer have chips and, and sweet kind of snacks. My snacks are a carefully designed snack mix, mostly almonds with some uh, craisins and other uh, some other nuts in there and some oatmeal uh, for my daily snack mix. So if I get to Hungry's, out here fishing in the boat or in the middle of the day, I grab my healthy uh, snack mix rather than something full of starch or full of sugar. So, so far, you know, increase of 2,000 miles a year on my bike, uh, my doctor was actually surprised when I first told him, I said, I said hey doc, I don't want to go on to metformin just because I'm pre-diabetic. I read some papers about it and it says that you have a better chance at avoiding diabetes with uh, lifestyle choices, losing some weight, exercise, uh, some self-control in the food area uh, than you do by going on metformin. So let's skip the metformin. And uh, he wasn't real optimistic because this was a doctor in Louisiana and with all the food in Louisiana, he hasn't seen many of his Louisiana patients uh, succeed with more prayer and lifestyle choices. Um, but as you saw me, the year after that, the year after that, the year after that, and measured my A1C and fasting blood glucose, uh, my A1C tends to come in between 4.9 and 5.1. He's like, hey, keep doing what you're doing, man. But it takes a lot of self-control, uh, especially in the southern heat, to keep riding one's bike you know, an average of 40 miles, uh, 40 miles a week uh, throughout the year. So I communicated uh, some of these successes to my twin brother, and we were praying for him. And my twin brother got really motivated as well. He said, wow, my brother's doing that. And he's avoiding diabetes with these lifestyle choices. Uh, maybe I can as well. So uh, he started walking on the beach every day with his dog. And he's got this really active, healthy uh, young dog. He's, so he takes these long walks on the beach. He also kayaks out there in the surf an awful lot. Uh, for whatever reason, he prefers to do that rather than bike ride. And uh, he started getting really healthy with his uh, eating habits, again, avoiding the high glycemic foods and so on. And so he lost, he went from about, two, we were about six foot two inches tall. So he was up at 240 pounds, which is a body mass index over 30. Not healthy at all, puts you at high risk for diabetes. Uh, you combine that with our Hispanic uh, heritage, uh, so a Hispanic genetics and a BMI over 30, that's just super high risk for diabetes. It's not healthy at all. Um, so, but he lost, he went from about 240 pounds, he lost 60 pounds down to about 180 pounds, and uh, that was through prayer and self-control. And uh, recently, he, well, but about a year ago now, he visited his doctor, and his doctor confirmed. He's not a diabetic anymore. We gave him the okay to come off of insulin, off Danuvia, off metformin, off whatever the other diabetic, uh, diabetic medications that he was on might be. And he's maintaining that through his healthy lifestyle choice. Now, I don't want to pretend that one can simply, you know, reach down deep uh, into oneself and muster up the kind of self-control it takes uh, for that kind of eating habits and that level of exercise uh, to avoid diabetes or to defeat diabetes and its complications. I want to emphasize that self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It comes uh, through the blood and through faith uh, in Jesus Christ. If you can't get there without prayer, cry out to Jesus. Because gluttony is part of the sinful nature. And scripture says that everyone who sins is a slave to sin. But if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So let me encourage you to put your hope and your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. Be honest with the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I, I don't have the self-control that I need in my own strength to overcome diabetes. I don't have the self-control to exercise uh, as much as I need to. I don't have the self-control uh, to stop eating uh, as much as I am and, and the wrong kinds of foods that I'm eating. 
Uh, so pray and be honest with the Lord and keep praying and find some prayer partners and also some accountability partners uh, in the process. You know, be honest with the elders or maybe a small group at church and have them pray for you as well. Uh, if you're married, ask your wife to support you uh, by encouraging you. You know, my wife has been a great encouragement to me. You know, my wife bought me a new bicycle uh, a couple years ago when my old one was wearing out, and she knew that, uh, hey, it's cheaper than a fitness club membership or other things that one might uh, need or do to maintain the level of activity that I was trying to make, maintain on the diabetes. My wife also, she goes, I probably bike ride five or six times a week. Uh, but my wife comes with me two or three times a week just to encourage me. And, and also, I mean, she's getting older as well, so it's good to have her get some exercise. Uh, my wife also helped me out in the area of self-control by just by kind of uh, the food selection. You know, she does the grocery shopping, and a lot of self-control is actually exercised in the grocery store. So she doesn't bring home a lot of ice cream. She doesn't bring home a lot of chips and bread and pastries and sugary snacks or high glycemic index foods, uh, we've made a careful plan and through the years uh, we've learned which foods sort of uh, will make my blood sugar pop positive on the morning fasting blood glucose test and which foods are don't affect my glycemic index in the same way. Uh, she also, she's a great cook, and so at my request, she's willing to make fish once a week, and I keep the bacon cheeseburgers only once a month, and to, she has really worked hard to help me eat uh, more healthily, and I don't think my progress with, the, with respect to uh, defeating the diabetes uh, could have been the same without my wife as both a, a helpmate and an accountability partner in uh, defeating the diabetes. So the bottom line is, for most Americans, type 2 diabetes is a choice. Choose something else. If you find you don't have the faith or the self-control or whatever it takes to make the healthy choices that you need, cry out to the Lord Jesus. You don't want diabetes, and by the grace of God, uh, pray for healing, pray for self-control. Uh, a lot of people think you just don't need to have diabetes. Say no to it.